I heard you want to be a Frito Bandido like me. You too? Then you must sing the Bandido song. Let's sing together. You just follow the bouncing Fritos corn chips bag. Ay, 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 ay. I am the Frito Bandido. Yeah, I like Fritos corn chips. I love them, I do. I want Fritos corn chips. I'll get them from you. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, I am the Frito Bandito. Give me Fritos corn chips and I'll be your friend. The Frito Bandito, you must not offend. Now, boys and girls, you are Frito Bandidos too. You sing the Frito Bandito song and you look for crunchy Fritos corn chips. That's nice. Munch, 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 bunch of Fritos corn chips. Aha, yes. The Frito Bandito, um, <laughs> one of those, uh, Groovy Archives is here, one of those characters that has, um, I mean, he was, he was one of the original cancel culture, so people may complain about cancel culture of today, but, uh, since the 60s, things have been cleaned up as they were found problematic, hate global pop culture. So, yeah, I mean, Frito Bandito, the early funny face characters, a lot of those questionable depictions have um, Munch a Bunch. Ha the Munch a Bunch, the poor Munch a Bunch, they never get their, never get their level of respect, uh, have been cleaned up through the years. This day, we are doing chips and crackers. Um, it's a little lighter load than other days, but the quality of today's stuff, I think, is is a little higher um with that initial shot i i showed like something that is kind of a an outlier it's the uh the core cheese box which is just your sort of um cheese puffs but it has this crazy guy johnny corn who is a corn character almost like a little corn elf you see his little elven boots and this is um, this is a thing that was I don't know how I don't know if I'd call it common, but chips and things came in boxes, kind of late fifties, eh, actually mid fifties into the sixties. I I don't remember ever buying chips in a box, but I have a few examples of chips boxes. Um, and this, you know, is a, so it's a twin pack. And we're going to get into Bell brand potato chips, where we'll see a lot of different packaging and, and see a lot of different ways that they package things. But boxes were sort of a late 50s, early 60s way of packaging. And this one made by Maze Industries, Earlville, Illinois. And it just sort of shows you um, how, you know, this is not a... Um, not a product I've ever seen anything else about. Um, have you tried our other fine maize products, corn nicks, corn barbecues, and cornmeal corn? That sounds delicious. Um, thrifty tips. Do fresh and leftover corn cheese. Simply put them in the oven and sort of dry them out a little bit. So if, you know, packaging back then probably wasn't nearly as much uh, preservatives because all this has is cornmeal, vegetable oil, cheese flavor, salt, and color. There's like no preservatives in this whatsoever. Core cheese salad dressing, an elegant surprise for your next meal. Add a quantity of crumbled core cheese to your favorite salad dressing and then pour over crisp salad. Yes, but you know, double front box, beautiful. Just, you know, great character. Um, everything about it's wonderful. And, and this is the kind of thing, you know, like we, we've talked about and I've said a million times is I don't remember this. I mean, this is, you know, probably regional Midwest. Um, just some product that might have come out for two years, five years, ten years. Who knows? Um, I've never seen anything else on it. So it's really interesting you have those kind of products. And that's the thing about potato chips is they're a regional product. You know, they're made in the region. They're shipped to the region because they have to be fresh. They have to, you know, they get turned over really quick. And so every different region had these things. And of course, slowly as time goes by, um, they consolidate. But core cheese were, were doing their cheese puffs things at some point. So we're gonna follow that up with, um, uh, this one's actually a, 
snack. I guess I guess those are snacks. And this was a series of Kellogg's trying to get into the snack brand. Um, so they came up with Pokes. I think the year was 1965. I have an ad somewhere. But these boxes, um, you know, it says new. They were short-lived. Basically, they look like they're just Czech cereal, flavored Czech cereal. Um, which, I don't know that Kellogg's made a Czech cereal at the point. But that's pretty much what they are. And they had corn pokes. Cheese pokes. Barbecue pokes. Tater pokes. Now, the, the interesting thing about these boxes is... Uh, years and years and years ago, I think it was at the Atlantic City show, I think it was at the Atlantic City show, somebody showed up from the Leo Burnett company, I believe. I was not there, but I've sort of heard sort of stories about this. And they had a table full of cereal boxes, all mint flats unused. And these four Pokes boxes were there. Uh, the sort of story I heard is one big guy, I think Diamond Comics, bought like half the boxes. And then I think the other boxes just sort of went in different directions. I think it was them. So, of course, I was not there. I, I don't think I was even collecting at the point at which this happened. But, you know, you heard about this story and I heard about these Pokes boxes. And I was like, oh, my God, these are my dream. So years later, the person who bought them auctioned all these boxes off in Toy Shop, which was this magazine that came out monthly, maybe bi-monthly at a certain point. And I went in and I bought, um, I think I got three at the time. I think I missed one, or maybe I missed two. Maybe I bought two at the time. And then over the course of the next few years, I was able to get the other two. So these these four boxes were those four boxes that were put out there. And I, I, I mean, I believe there was only one set. Um, and uh, I was able to um, put the four back together in one group. So it's pretty nice. Um, this one is, of course, my favorite because it's a corn character. And I love corn characters because they're so weird and they always are crazy because corn is crazy. Um, just beautiful boxes, just classic uh, 1960s Kellogg's. And they just fit right in with the, with the Applehead Applejacks and the banana. They're just like, it just it, it just does the whole thing. And you know, these boxes were meant to be cut up. I think somebody at some point turned up a Canadian version of one of these boxes. But as you can see, they have some staple holes on this in the side here where they were probably all sort of kept. And, you know, it's a guy made out of cheese and then he's got a hat. And he just got all this weird cheddar Charlie official snake pass. Just these weird, weird, you know, like, like you're going to be able to use these as, as dipping chips. It's like a corn checks. Barbecue Poke, by far the least interesting of them because he's a barbecue. Uh, no such thing as a barbecue. Um, once again, nice back. And then we'll look at the uh, Tater Pokes once again. He's got the kind of little, I don't know, little Irish hat or something. Like he's like he's a, like he's a leprechaun or something. He's like a leprechaun potato. Uh, yes, how, how weird race stuff sort of creeps in everywhere. Um, but yeah, those, those are the pokes, um, you know, short lived product, uh, looks like the Netflix quick punch guy. Yes. Yeah. The pokes things are all from that sort of school of a product that, it, you know, it, it, it was, they make this sort of sculpture or something and then they sort of slap some eyes on it or, or whatever. Um, next we're going to kind of go into Laura Scudder's. Laura Scudder's was one of the primary one, probably the primary uh, chip that I ate when I was a kid. And um, I think like the first thing I ever found Laura Scudder's was we were at the flea market and I found like we found some of these little trays. So this would have been, you know, your sort of tray like this. Um, and it's got this great mask on the back that you're supposed to cut out and then you punch out the eyes and then you uh you know you become chief wampum once again a little culturally insensitive but still just you know what beautiful beautiful um 
design. And yeah, Laura Scudder's was was what I remember eating. And the super cool thing was Brandon Waffle Whiffer, who's on here, um, just a few months ago, maybe a month ago, sent me this, which is uh, an uncut sheet of these. And the kind of interesting thing is it's not punched. It seems like it's maybe, a, it's probably the same paper. This one's just aged, not aged as well. Um, but it doesn't have the die cuts for the eyes. So maybe this was just a, a proof that came off and then they they did that stamping as, as it went through the whole process. But just really need to see, you know, uh, uncut sheet. And, you know, as you can see, it continues on over here. So these, they probably came out as big blankets, you know, kind of like four feet by i don't even know how long but he got a couple of these from a woman somewhere um and just really cool but you know just a nice uh a nice sort of thing to sort of go with this is it different size oh wait maybe it's a different size oh look at that it's a it is it is a different size isn't it mm, okay so this one is different I wonder what it says scudder food product and this says what does this say and it says scudder food product too six little engines i don't know so maybe they uh maybe they changed the size of the box at some point that is pretty strange oh no it's the same size i'm just losing my mind <laughs> so that's pretty cool and so that was one of the first things and i remember eating those when i was a kid and so i was like oh i'm all about wampum and so as time went by i um I found a couple of bags. I think I got one of these from Jason. Not sure where I got the other one. And Jason actually has another earlier bag that has a big wampum, which he just got, which is super cool. But, you know, it's really neat because, you you know, it's uh, the this white is printed, but the where the teepees, it's not printed. So you know, let me show you the other one. Here's the other one. And as you can see, one's just corn chips, one's barbecue corn chips. And I love these barbecue corn chips. I ate a million of them when I was a kid. Um, so you would see the corn chips through the bag, which it's just like really cool. And I mean, like, look at this. Oh, just so gorgeous. Such great design. Um, they're pitching their peanut butter on the back. Laura Scudder's Puquitas Mini Tacos and Baking Nuts. Of course, I've never seen Puquitas or Mini Tacos. Uh, not at all surprising. And as you can see, th this this one's the earlier bag, you know, 57 cents versus I think this one's a buck 15, which I, I don't quite understand how that that must be a number of years because uh, that's a that's a pretty fat price. And you can see Laura Scudders was in um what does it say? Anaheim, Houston, San Antonio. So once again, regional, you know, at this point it's just saying just saying snack foods division pet incorporated pet pet was uh so maybe snack food pet incorporated i don't know maybe they were always owned by pet i don't know um but wampum so so beautiful and then at some point i found this where's the other one which is which we we bought tons of these trays when we were kids because we would you know take chips in our um in our uh lunches um, I wish I remembered what lunch boxes I had when I've, oh, Jason has a mini tacos. There it is. Um, so this one, each one of the different, um, each one of the different packs has like a little international kid, which is a little, um, a little bit like, um, small world. And I was able to find one of the packs. So, you know, on the back it says, Malaysia has the flag and there's the little Malaysian kid and the flag on the front. Super cool. Then another thing <laughs> that Brandon found, which he sold me or traded me at some point, were all these, um, somebody had saved proofs of all these Laura Scudder's um, wrappers. And then these ones, I think most of these ones are the Animal Series, which I'm pretty sure I remember. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's the toucan. It's the beautiful snow leopard. And, of course, my favorite, the koala bear. I was a huge koala bear kid. As, as for a koala bear fan as a kid, the golden eagle. 
orangutan. And it's really neat because you're seeing, you know, one's on barbecue, one's on corn chips. And these were all sort of mounted on paper. Um, some of them are still mounted. I think I cut some of them off. American bison, polar bear, and this is this is this is just um, so totally my childhood. Uh, rhinoceros, the crowned pigeon, the bongo, and then it, it's pretty. Oh wait, there's, let's see, there's a couple. One more an, one more animal. The ring-tailed lemur. And it's kind of interesting because now we have the person had taped some of these in. And so uh, here's, here's our Malaysia kid again. Denmark. Nepal. And the last one is Barbados. So those are just super cool. What an interesting, you know, kind of neat to find to find the tray and some of the packages and uh, the animal ones. We need to find the animal tray. Um, last little Laura Scudder's thing, this really cool little pop-up book. And the pop-ups are just amazing. And then, oh, th this book belongs to a gift from Laura Scudder's Once Upon a Tour. So probably, maybe, even when you went on tour at the factory, they gave you this one. You know, I guess it's not all pop art, pop ups, but um, this weird little potato chip guy with wings. Okay, this is really nice. And I think, and there's the wampum guy. So cool. You know, they keep touring the factory, potato chips this way, potato chips. Maybe there's no more pop-ups. And then at the end, you have your classic product shot of the kids with all the products. This is, like, really cool. Um, there it is, and there's there's the factory. Uh, they started in Monterey Park. Joint ventures in Barcelona, Sweden, International... And there's Snack Division of Snack Division of Pet Incorporated. Yeah, so cool. Once upon a tour. But that was, you know, back when I was, was super hardcore about everything, I would search chips and Laura Scudders on eBay every once in a while, and things like that popped up. Now we'll go into the Frito-Lay uh, brand. Pick up my Frito-Lay stuff. Um, Frito-Lay brand, I start with uh, Frito the Kid. Frito the Kid uh, did stuff at Disneyland. There was like a Fritos, uh, Casa de Fritos at Disneyland for years and years where there was at one point a full figure of the Frito Kid where you'd put a quarter in there and then it would dispense a bag of Fritos. There's pictures of that online. It's super cool. Um, I don't have a ton of Frito the Kid stuff, but they made, these are the bottoms of the trays. And as I was going through my stuff, I hadn't, hadn't thought about it and realized this tray actually has most of the bits. So this is your, um, you know, your tray. And um, as you can see, these are the couple of the little flaps. Frito Kid cutouts on the bottom and a little Frito Kid. And then here's another one of the um, cutouts. And I think there's probably uh, two or three. I mean, there's at least two. There's I think there's maybe three or four of these. Um, so Frito the Kid was around, you know, through the 50s. Um, and then we got to um, the Frito Bandito, which we played the song at the beginning. And I have, we'll do a little tilt up really quick. There's the big sign, which you can kind of see, hopefully, um, which lives on my wall. And then this one's a really cool, um, really cool promo who is this bandit i think my dog is under the under the couch and she's moving around you fold it out and there's a picture of the rack so this is a this is something that they would have sent out to um to grocers and then boom wanted for theft of frito's corn chips the frito's bandito and it's all shot up so it's like this kind of promo stuff was stuff I was always 
I was always on the lookout for, and then it, you know, just folds back up. Boom. And then the sort of key Frito Bandito piece, um, the typical thing you find is the erasers. Um, little erasers, pretty collectible. Um, so I was always looking for the tray that had the offer um, for the eraser. And I found this sweatshirt one. And the thing that made this one amazing was it came with the sticker. So they probably never printed. Maybe I mean, maybe they printed. I don't know. Waffle Whiffer might know. Um, a box that had this offer. Instead, they just slapped a sticker on the top and threw it in there. And boom, this is, this is your proof of the existence of how this thing came. Um, and years before that, I'd found... Um, the uh, WC Fritos one. So I was always thinking that it was going to be a little hanger like this. And so with this box, it would have been folded up and then that would have been right there and would have told you and you'd have known. And then on the back, it's got the uh, offer for the Munch Club. But uh, this, you know, the only remnant I've ever found is this little, uh, this little tiny sticker. <laughs> um, but, and the sweatshirt offer. I think the sweatshirt has turned up um, once or twice. And as we were saying, they started with the Frito Bandito. They did the Frito Bandito. Then he got the boot. And then they they had the Munch a Bunch, which was like these three little bandit characters. Um, and then after the Munch a Bunch came W.C. Fritos. W.C. Fritos, you know, because he's the third one. He's the most watered, watered down. Um, so with the Munch a Bunch, you find the erasers. And then I think I have a little a little set of pencils like a little coloring set which um i didn't find and then i've got this tiny little scrap of a box and so that would have been probably on the bottom of the tray there would have been cutouts of the munch a bunch you know once again just the the little the little the little scraps oh and then i have wait, what is this is this the same as this one oh and here you go this is interesting then i also have this eraser offer one so they they must have done it twice slightly slightly different um and then the other flip side character is the cheetos mouse um which they made an eraser of him which i haven't seen i used to have a couple of bags which brandon now has in his collection but i do still have this cheetos tray with um some some uh, cheetos mouse funny frolics like what what does that even mean i don't know color the cheetos mouse from these scenes of tv adventures you get different funny frolics on different packages so they're just like little coloring things but you know once again it's this neat little neat little tray and yeah we'd love to find find tons of the bags which someone has nicely folded and have to save um one other cheetos mouse thing i have is real nice animation cell always on like a little magic carpet and i mean you know how nice is that they also made a little they made a stuffed um have you ever seen any frito-lay erasers oh yeah of course i used i used to have them all i mean not them all there's many different colors they're they're on ebay all the time the the frito bandito is the most expensive sometimes those go for a fair amount of money um but I, i've eliminated most premiums from my life uh i have too much stuff as it is and then the last sort of thing from Frito-Lay is their um, their other really primary uh, creation, uh, the Doritos. And, I mean, these bags are just really nice. You have the nacho f cheese flavor and the taco flavor. Um, just, you know, that lettering just is so, so, so great. Um, pretty similar bags. Uh, about nine outs, seven outs. Sometimes these have dates on them, which is amazing. I mean, I guess they, yeah, I don't know, serve hot. Um, but yeah, just a couple of really good looking bags. Um, back when they knew how to, they knew how to design stuff. I remember getting a yellow WC Freedom on 73, early premium memory. Yeah, Brandon. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's, WC is like 73, 74. 
they made a lot of stuff for WC Frito. There's like the kit and there's birthday cards. And they sent all sorts of stuff out. Next up, we'll look at Granny Goose, which was another sort of semi-local brand. I think Granny Goose might have been, um, yes, Oakland. So we had Granny Goose, but it was, I don't know. It just never seemed as cool as, as Laura Scudder's. I don't know why. These are early bags. These are, in my opinion, the nicest bags that they made for Granny Goose. Granny Goose is just gorgeous. Um, I don't know where I got these, but man, these are these are just just a couple of good looking bags. Um, just the design on her is perfect. Just 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 amazing. And Jason was sharing some uh, some pictures of stuff of a Granny Goose bag that was very similar to this one. Which, she's been redesigned. She's not as cool and cute. But still kind of nice. And this one's nice because on the back, we show this nice Fiesta corn chip, which are round. And, you know, there she is. And just uh, really neat. And that's kind of nice thing about potato chip bags. And potato chip bags show up mint a lot of times. And as I said, we'll talk about Bell brand. Um, Cheetos Mouse, they made a Cheetos Mouse belt buckle. That's cool. We'll talk about Bell brand because I had a lot of stuff on that. And, you know, a lot of potato chip bags show up mint because they they sat around the printers or whatever like that. Um, and where did the little ones go? Oh, they fell over. Um, then this one's sort of a transitional one where she's just there on the top. I also really like this illustration. It's kind of a, it's an interestingly designed bag. It's not amazing but she's really cute and then we have a lot of a lot of nice stuff going on in the back here catch the litter bug there was definitely a time in the early 70s where we did this whole litter bug thing and and it really we the the, the world sort of nothing the united states sort of codified the idea of recycling at that point which i think was really important because you know once if you can lock people into realizing the importance of recycling it's it's really good um, and there she is. Just great little illustrations. Really simple. Really fun. I would guess this bag is from like 72 or 73. But, you know, look at that guy. Litter bug. What a jerk. And now we get into the later 70s, early 80s. And, um, Tranny Goose has sort of gotten, gotten to this point. Which, um, yeah, you know. Okay. This is the Granny Goose I kind of I kind of remember. And this one is like an '83 bag uh, for when a when World Series tickets or Oakland A's baseball card. Oh, Oakland A's baseball cards inside here. So of course, you know the baseball card guys probably saved these. And then these are kind of nice because these are some of the little um, small bags that would have come in the chip assortments: corn chips, barbecue. Oh, barbecue tortilla chips. That's kind of different. Just straight up potato chips and cheese nibbles. And, and as you can see, with, with so many of these products, they just, everybody made the same products, you know? Um, we'll see a few weird things. And I also have a nice little Granny Goose cell with, um, like, the bad guy. And I, I kind of remember these, these commercials. But I guess I don't remember them so much. <sighs> see, I'm taking my time. Well... Yeah, yeah, we got a lot to go through, so I should pick it up a little. Uh, Jack's brand cheese twist, nice little sign. I've seen a couple things on this Jack's brand. I don't know where it's um, I don't know where it's out of, but certainly not a brand we had around here. Uh, Nat, oh Nally's. Oh, well, I'm getting a little confused. This is Nally's, another potato chip box. We'll see him later on a bag. Actually, no, I have one right here. Oh, I think he's a. I think he's a squirrel. Yeah, I guess he's a squirrel. He's not a chipmunk. Um, but just beautiful foil bag. And I have got like four of these. You know, somehow I've ended up with four of these. So they must have been a quantity from somewhere that I ended up with a few of them. But, you know, neat little cutout of him from the back of a box. Um, and then this stuff probably should have been later. But another brand that I am not familiar with, KAS. This weird hillbilly barbecue, Ozark. And you can see, you know, pretzels, cornies, Indian corn chips, torticos, golden pop, you know, all um, 
and, you know, this was, this thing's just been folded up a million times, packed away, uh, kind of sad. Now we're going to go into Bell brand potato chips. Um, do I have any Uts? I don't think I have any Uts. Um, I have some Wise potato chip stuff, which for some reason didn't show up. Maybe, yeah, yeah I have a few Wise Owl things. Uh, Uts? No, I don't know anything about, I think Uts is a, it's an East Coast brand. And that's the thing you got to remember is a lot of my buying occurs out here. So um, I probably never searched Uts on eBay. Um, you know, so uh, years ago, we we're at the flea market, the Rose Bowl flea market. We were walking around and we come up on this lady and she has these big, um, big books, big scrapbooks. Uts is Baltimore. Okay. These big scrapbooks. And these scrapbooks were the scrapbooks for the Bell brand potato chip company, which was an LA brand of chips. These were the scrapbooks that they kept. And there was like everything in there from Bell brand back into the forties, except Bell brand did some uh, baseball cards and somebody had removed that stuff and sold it elsewhere. Even though there were a few baseball card things that they missed in there, uh, which, which, uh, which was good. A few sealed cards, which were very valuable. Um, but it was, it was these, I think there were two giant books and a box of unused uh, bags. And so we, we bought the whole lot and we left it there. And then we kept walking around the flea market. We got about two aisles and then we're like, you know what we should do? We should not leave that in her uh, stall. We should go get it and carry it out to the car so it's locked away nice and safe. So we carried it out there, me and my buddy Steve. Um, and then we, we went to his house and we went through it. And I sort of disassembled the scrapbooks because there was all kinds of glue and stuff in there and tape. And you want to... I mean, you want to clean stuff up because that tape is just going to continue to degrade. And it was just all stuff taped in a book. There wasn't any kind of information. But the some of the most interesting things in there was that there was a bunch of Beanie and Cecil stuff, including ads. And uh, there were some of these boxes. They were all cut up in pieces. Um, but there were some panels for the boxes. So you can see this is like probably 53, 54, oh no, 51. So at 51, they were putting tips in boxes. And there were hundreds of photos, which I, I have I have a whole, not a whole box, but, you know, a big stack of photos. And there were just tons of signs. And there were, um, let's see what other weird stuff. You know, little weird, you know, just little tiny... Raymar of the Jungle, just a little tiny sign that would have slid into the, um, you know, Raymar of the Jungle. And yeah, and then we start with the bags. And I had, I had a pile of bags that big, which I finally just sold off because I think I sold them to Japan. I think somebody in Japan bought them. I just didn't need that many uh, <laughs> old... Uh, you know, they ran a, here's some coupons that they ran an offer with Tasty Freeze. Here's Roscoe 80s. Pencils. You know, little coupons. Just, I don't even know what this is. This is like a, this is like a mailer that would have had something in it. Oh, this is the pencil offer. So the pencils would have been in this little mailer. And so they just glued this into the thing. You know, more ads. And I have, that's the thing about this, this find it was so long ago. This stuff is just littered around my existence. Um, but the fun thing is, is there were all these bags. And I kept examples of, of most all the bags. Because there were some really neat ones. Pizza puffs. And that's the thing, I you know, when I think about... Um, when I think about like, you know, doing something flavored pizza, I think that's a more common current thing. Nope. Back in like probably 55, they were making pizza flavored uh, cheese puffs. So there, there is nothing new under the sun. Um, and as you can see, some of this stuff sticks together because it, it was taped in there, which is horrible, horrible, horrible. But, you know, here's these cool... I think her name was Betsy Bell, and she's shaped like a bell and has a little girl's head. You know, bacon, corn, bacon, bacon, potato chips. 
Who would have thought? Bacon potato chips. Oh, this Bell brand also made old-fashioned cookies. They also made Tom Sawyer potato chips. So although this was um, Tom Sawyer Foods, Bell brand made them and packaged them. Um, let's see. Try and do this sort of in sequential order of time. Barbecue. I guess I saved a few of some of these. <laughs> I guess I've got a bunch of these barbecue ones. I don't know why I saved a bunch of those. And then, oh, here you go. Dodger action picture. So, so they did these Dodgers and Rams uh, baseball cards. And, and the person had cleared out most of the baseball cards. But in a few of the bags, there was still, um, there was still a, a card in there. Crinkle chips. And some more barbecue. Okay, and these are like the... Okay, here's some of the other ones. Pretzel sticks. Uh, party puffs. Party puffs. And then another pizza puffs. Party puffs. Do I have anything new ear potato chips? No, I do not have anything new ear potato chips. We're actually getting down to the end of potato chips. And then these are... Man, there's so many. Oh, uh, trying to oh, popcorn. This bag is really weird because it's printed backwards. Popcorn, popcorn, and that's another whole thing you could spend your life collecting is popcorn stuff. There's people that just collect popcorn tins. Anderson's blown rice, wheat. Anderson's being blown wheat. These are probably more cereals, but this is all stuff that um, that Bell Brand made and packaged. What is that piece of tape? Um, and then we get into what I remember from from is this design, which is this these uh big um diamonds. Barbecue. Barbecue tortilla. What is this? And this is, oh, this is pretty cool. Look at this. 1961. This is a listing of the purchase requisition for the, um, uh, the uh, pictures, the Dodger pictures. Pretty cool. How many did they make? Is that say 500 million? 250 million? I don't know. Some big numbers. Um, tortilla chips. Um, let's see. Crinkle in purple. Everyone's favorite onion and garlic. Yum. But I mean, just, just such nice design. So. Uh, I don't know if I'd say simple, but um, sort of iconic. Barbecues, probably a little later. Smaller barbecue, cheese puffs. And yeah, as you can see, it likes clear, so you get to see the cheese puffs. Crinkle chips and another purple. These ones are really cool. Nibbits. Cheese flavored and barbecue flavored corn chips. As you can see, you can see just um, how many products and how many sizes they made. And like, unless you were to find, and, and you know, look at this. This one's sort of a more papery, and then this is the more plasticky, clear plastic one. This one's not opaque. This one's opaque, this one's clear. And you can see, you know, look at the two different... You know the transition and we can see the transition again here boom the, the two different things so you know unless you find like a crazy corporate score like this you're never going to be able to put together how this brand evolved and all the colors and all the choices you know pretzel sticks 
Thin pretzel sticks, just pretzels. Thin pretzels. I should go through these and just do one final pass and, and put them all in a, in a proper organization. Barbecue cheddar cheese. You know, in some packages, you know, they would have this things, you know, put on there. There's how the peanuts came. Crinkle dip chips. You know, the two little, two purples. <sighs> potato chips and regular potato chips. Okay. And you know, some of these bags get really big. There's that. <sighs> and um, a really nice little tortilla chips bag. And then <laughs> there's only one of this. I don't know if this is like the final iteration or whatever, but I think Bell Brand went out of business not long after this. Um, and as you see, did they go out of business or did they become a division of Granny Goose? So Granny Goose bought them out, probably canceled all, you know, just changed everything to Granny Goose. Because I kind of remember that from when I was a kid. Kind of remember that. When Belle disappeared and there was just a lot more Granny Goose down here. Probably what Granny Goose was doing is they wanted to, um... They wanted to transition into the Southern California market, whatever markets um, Bell was servicing. And, you know, being an Oakland brand up there, this says, this says, oh, it says Bell Brand, Bell brand Division of Granny Goose, so they're still in L.A., so they probably just um, wanted this territory, and so they worked out some sort of deal, and boom, 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 there it was. <sighs> still a few more chips to go. Um, oh, this is like the one wise potato chip thing I found. I have some little bags too somewhere. Since we're all starting to get think about Halloween. This is a super cool one. Woofen Puffs. Cheese flavored like nothing you've ever tasted. Um, probably exactly like most cheese puffs we tasted. But this cool Dr. Seuss kind of bird. Granny Goose made some freezer pops. Oh, Jason did not know. I guess I probably never told that story to Jason. Um, another sort of big brand, Chesty. And then this, you could have ordered like a little truck. This would have been stapled to the top of a bag. Jack Snacks, which has this cool little Jack guy. Just a cheese twist bag. Ryland's Potato Chips was this cool early potato chip guy uh, potato guy and that's the thing about um potato chips a lot of the earlier bags were this it's like a it's sort it's not cello it's almost like a wax papery kind of bag i have some other um bags for some products somewhere that i bought and they're it's even more fragile because these old potato chip bags are just like really fragile they do not do well with age um, so I, I think that's another reason why we don't see, um, as many as we, we probably could hack snacks. This is nuts. Should have been last week, but, uh, Jason turned this up and it's, it's a buddy Hackett branded snack, which probably was like some scam that his buddies got him into saying, Oh, you should get into the snack business and sell soya nuts, buddy Hackett and buddy Hackett probably pissed away a, a decent portion of his fortune uh nice tortilla chip bag which i also think i got from jason which i think came out of his Muntiki collection which as you can see we didn't have a lot of tortilla chip bags um crispies which has this weird little horrifying cowboy kid and then i also have a really big crispies bag with um all sorts of things about camping so this looks like it's an Air phoenix arizona brand Chippos, which is um, which is a '70s box brand um, from General Mills. This looks like it's from '72. 
So it was General Mills trying to get into uh, the chip brands. We'll do some more General Mills stuff in a second here. Um, Quaker tried to get into the chip business with these. Uh, they did like three or four different products, including corn skis. And um, I can't think of the other two. Um, but they came in like a little uh, tube. I met a guy who worked for the company that produced Chesty. He said the character's name came from the head of the company whose nickname was Chesty. There it is. But, you know, once again, oh, there they are. Dippy Canoes and Salty Surfers. Um, this is nice because it's just the uh, label, so I don't have to keep a big stupid can. Uh, one of the ha other harder things to find are, um, are uh, pretzel boxes and pretzel bags. As you can see, I had a few in the Bell stuff, but I don't think I had any others. Uh, this is the only Mr. Salty uh, box I've ever found. And then I also have this kind of nice uh, sunshine box. And that's the thing when you collect as long as I collected. You know, you realize when you see something that's pretzel related, you're like, oh, I should sort of put that in the, in the rarer pile because I'm probably not going to see that again. Now we're going to kind of go into crackers. Oh, whoops. One last nice little single half ounce Lay's. Ah. Um, start with some Nabisco. Well, this is going to be a full show. <laughs> I'm never quite sure what's going to happen. Um, years ago, I saw a salesman's box for these Donald Duck crackers, and I've always been looking for a box, and this is the closest I ever got was these two little scraps. Now we're going to go into a series of some of my favorite boxes, which are the Nabisco Thins boxes. These boxes all came from a big, uh, the big cereal load that we found a million years ago. And in part of the cereal load, he'd saved a bunch of crackery boxes from the 50s. And in there were, was this whole run of these Nabisco Thins boxes. And they're just, you know, we've got the television type cutout. Um, you know, we got the television shape, so that tells us we're probably looking at 53, 55. And well, I guess they aren't all television shape, just this one is. <laughs> so we got the party fins, bacon fins. And as you can see, we, you know, they've got this really nice design. We got what I think is one of the original wheat thins boxes now tastier crunchier but i mean like it doesn't look that much like a wheat thin of today vegetable thins i guess they're sort of shaped yeah, i don't know triangle thins and we were making cheese nips at the time, too. Wheat thins, bacon thins. And most of these are double front, but the triangle thins has, has both things. And then the celery thins, which is, you know, that's what I'm talking about. This sort of nice, almost a lime green, off, little off lime green. Hmm. And then we have a couple of, um, what was that one? Oh, we, those were wheat thins. And then we got the early Triscuit and then a much later Triscuit. And the much later Triscuit, you can see we got sociables, chicken and a biscuit on the back. Um, let's see, uh, chit chat which are barbecue flavored, which is kind of interesting. But you know, look at this beautiful 1960s, you know. And that's the cool thing is like, you know, it's like the party wraps around both sides of the box. It's like, how cool is that? And we got like the back. So we're making wheat thins, triscuits, sociables, tango. I have a record for tango somewhere. Hmm. I wonder where that is. Um, and we were doing sociables and that's the thing you can really see that these um these boxes are pitched towards the suburban housewife 
<laughs> you know, for for all of your party needs. They're not, for, you know, they're not trying to sell these those ones at least to the kids. Um, and then I've got this nice little 1962 individual cheese tisbit box, which is really got a nice little date on there. Really cute. And then we have a little later tidbit box. Really cute. Cheese nips, which are so good. <laughs> and this is, you know, this is, you can display it either way. Because a lot of these would have been in grocery stores. This is dated 72. Would have been in grocery stores and in snack and in convenience stores and 7-Elevens, things like that. Everybody's favorite little loaf. <laughs> and one of my favorite crackers as a kid, not dandy, but I ate a lot of oyster crackers when I was a kid. I'm a, I'm a big oyster cracker fan um, as a snack cracker. This is disgusting because it has pictures of oysters, which I, I'm disgusted by the idea of oysters. Um, appetizers. They're little tiny crescent roll shaped uh, crackers. The new tiny tempting snack. Look at the little plate. <laughs> so silly. And then these guys are the really cool um, General Mills did a uh, did some 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 crackers and they did these great um snack crackers which whistles bugles and daisies so whistles bugles and daisies were like the first sort of um iteration and then they did another another one which was the bows so they did buttons and bows so there's so there's five of these to find. I have, um, as you'll see, I have three of them. And then here's the uh, here's the Bugles box, which, you know, of all these things, Bugles survived, and Bugles are great. Bugles have a, a very particular, overly salty taste that has um, has gotten them through the years. And here we can see this is a later. 70s box. What dick? This is probably it's a 73 up there. So it's 69. Yeah, this box is 69. It's pretty early. And then we see what else are they doing at this point? They're doing onions, bugles, pizza spins, and potato crisps. And then we have the an onions box. Sadly, this one's faded a bit on the bottom. pretty tragic and then another really weird um, product betcha bacon and you know really terrible General Mills garbagey offers on the back what if this is a date? 74 so you could have gotten betcha bacon in probably 73 74 and we are starting to wind down <laughs> um, we did cheese nips um, I've got these panels for Cheese Its. I guess Cheese Its are the one that's still really around. Yeah. It's a Sunshine brand. I don't know who makes Cheese Its now. I don't know if it's still Sunshine. And then this really cool Cheese Sticks Thins front. I think those all came from someplace together. Um, and a little later uh, snack box of Cheese Its. It's really cute. I just love these little. You know, just such a such an iconic little size. Um, yeah. And then since we were on Sunshine, I've got some old uh, Sunshine Cracker boxes and a Nabisco Premium Premium Cracker box. <laughs> And the last things for today are a couple of uh, sweet snacks. As you saw, most of these are just straight up salty snacks. Um, but there are a few sweet snacks that sort of fit in there. Cinnamon Joe, which 
there's a lot of products like this now, but I'm sure when this Cinnamon Joe came out at the time, people were like, what the hell is this? And then lastly, we're going to end with Screaming Yellow Zonkers, which, uh, which is a super sweet popcorn that has a little bit of a different flavor. And at one point, I bought um, Kellogg's Makes Cheez-Its now. Kellogg's Makes Cheez-Its now? Oh, okay. I did not know that. Be just knock off on... Yeah. Um, Chit-chat. It's pretty lush. Um, Cinnamon Joe. Um, so at one point, I bought like a big load of um, Zonkers boxes, which uh, ran like for like 15 or 20 years of boxes. So I had, I had the biggest collection of those for a long time. I've been selling off most of them because... I kept the ones, the first box I care about, and then these are the other two boxes with the premium fa alien figures. And one of them has a uh, mail away mug offer, and then the other one is just uh, some sort of weird video game contest. 1055, that's, that's crackers and chips. <laughs> Womp them. <sighs> Core cheese. So next week I'm going to do fast food, which is mostly Jack in a Box because that's the main fast food stuff that I collect because I was a Jack in a Box kid. Although we ate at McDonald's. I, I, McDonald's characters never appealed to me. Um, so it's mostly Jack in a Box and then some other weird stuff. Uh, and then in two weeks, we're going to do candy and gum. And I think that's going to be the end of the shows. Um, I, I think I've covered every category I have in my collection of crazy kids food. Um, so yeah, uh, if anybody has any more questions today about what's going on, that's fine. But that's, um, that's chips and crackers. Um. As you saw, those Kellogg's ones were really nice. There's some really... Chips and Crackers has some nice stuff. Um, a lot of real brands that resonate with your childhood. And, you know, as you saw, these ones were definitely brands that resonated with my childhood because they were local. Um, you might be out there saying, you know, like, where's the Wise Potato Chip stuff? Where's the Utz stuff? Where's the, you know... I That stuff I never really collected as, as much. Um, mostly just with the secondary things. I would just look for an example here or there. So we'll be back. I'll be back in a week to do fast food. Um, that one should be fun because um, Jack in the Box did a lot of neat stuff that I love. Um, and then candy and gum. So thanks everybody for showing up. Um, fantastic show. Love seeing your stuff. Thanks, Jason. <sighs> yes. Uh, I've shared a lot of stuff online, but there's... I never, you know, I don't always remember what I've shared online. So, and, you know, some of you probably haven't been watching along online for the past 18, 20 years or however long we've been sort of putting stuff out there. Thanks, Lisa H. Thanks, Nito Coolville. Thanks, Mom. And Rich, my brother Rich is out there listening and watching in Apple Valley. Someday I'll, we'll all get to see our families again, hopefully. Um, been a weird year. Thanks, Dennis. Hope you're doing good. So, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you all for coming, and uh, maybe we'll see you next week, and maybe we'll see you uh, uh, here or there. Goodbye.